Both the man who turned the like to One Direction, Leona, Little Mix into global superstars. But now Simon Cowell is teaming up with another former X Factor contestant. After appearing on the show back in 2012, Lucy Spragan has now signed with Simon's publishing company and he's back with a brand new single. It's called Balance. Yeah, going to be telling us all about the new partnership in just a moment. But as we've just seen Lucy's first TV appearance, we thought it's only fair. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look oh, no. back at Simon's, oh, no. which I didn't know this occurred right here on the small. Yeah, we back made in it. 1999. We, made <laughs> we have our panel of experts. We've got Kate Thornton, ex editor of Smash Hits and pop consultant, and Simon Cowell, who signed Five and Westlife. There's got to be a chemistry there, and you're, you're trying to find people with star quality. I mean, every, you know, all these guys I presume can sing and dance, but as Kate said, you try and find someone who's got that little extra something. No, no. Um, Show us more. No, please. Do <laughs> Don't stop it there. Uh, Simon George just now along for, alongside oh, former X Factor contestant Lisa Spragan. Good to have oh, you with us. So nice. lovely to see you Thanks both. Thanks for having us. I'm loving this. Is that a bit embarrassing for you, Simon? Just a bit. <laughs> you still look bit. great. Yeah, I've How gone very red. About, guys? Well, we excuse me. <clears throat> I have a publishing company, so that's why I started my career. You know, I was I used to sign writers, uh -huh. so. Uh, about two years ago, uh, we met up and I said to Lucy, which is true, I think Lucy, apart from being a great artist, is a brilliant songwriter. So I said, I want to publish your songs. You know, oh. just because... And I, I said, go on then. Go on. <laughs> if you want to. If you, if you must. Because I think, you know, great songs are like great paintings, you know, genuinely. Um, and I think that... Um, so, uh, you know, that was where we started. And then it was... Uh, I think it was August this year, Lucy played me the demo on this new song, Balance. And I always remember where I was when I hear, you know, a great song yeah, for the first yeah. time, you know, like when I heard Bleeding Love for the first time or What Makes You Beautiful. I mean, I can remember lots of times throughout my career where you remember where you were when you heard the demo and yeah. the song and it is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. So I'm obsessed with this song, by the way. I'm so excited. It's funny because I remember, like, I had the same with, with great first auditions. So I always remember, yeah. the, and when we went from the room to the arena, I don't know if that was the first year, maybe not the first year, but certainly, certainly second or third year uh, when you came. And they, you, they, you couldn't get off the stage. They yeah. kept you on. You did like maybe did one or two encore, more songs. Two encores. It, it was, was your unbelievable. own song, wasn't it? Is what yeah. I can remember. Which it, was really well, unusual at the time as well, because you were one of the first to come with your own stuff. Exactly. Yeah, it I was remember. wild. I remember leaving that, walking out of there, and I think I got a bus home, and I was sitting on a bus like this, going, "What just happened?" Yeah. Like it's so strange. And it's mad because you wasn't actually at that audition. No, I was in America at the time. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I you watched, watched it, the audition. Yeah. I thought, yeah, this is brilliant. Um, and I was really happy, you know, going back to songwriting, that Lucy was, you know, singing her own material because that was going to encourage other people to write yeah. their own uh, material. So it, I, I, it was almost like it was yesterday. It was weird, you know. It's gone so quickly all these years. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, it's... Uh, now in my, in my life, you have to do something you're passionate about. And, you know, this is something I'm super, super passionate about. Oh, that's lovely. Really? That is. And this is called Balance, this song. Tell us a little bit how it came about, Lucy. Well, I, I was in a session with my therapist and I, I've, I love my therapist. She's like my favourite person in the world. And I've gone through life... This is my seventh album that I'm releasing now. Um, and I've gone through life thinking, I need to do everything on my own and I need to own this myself, be super independent. And she just said, why? Like, why don't you, you know, ask for help sometimes? And... It made a lot of sense and I left the session, I wrote this song and I sent it to her. She was the first person who heard the song and she's so humble at her first response was like, you're doing all this work yourself, mm. like keep breathing and it's all going to be all right. Yeah, it's about... It's kind me. of quite symptomatic of times we're living in, isn't it? That people always think they've got to shoulder all that stuff themselves and actually yeah. if you just reach out a little bit, you know, yeah. there's, there's always I, help. I actually went, every time I played the song, I, I was playing it to everybody, I kept saying to it, don't listen to it once, listen to it twice. Because when you listen to the lyric of this song, to your point, it is so relevant to what is going around, you know, in the world right yeah. now, you know? Balance, I thought, yeah, it's a great message. God, it feels like 10 years ago, it feels nuts. I, don't, I can't. The last 10 years has been the longest, but also the shortest amount sure. of time. And how much can change, like, so much has changed. I never would imagine being in partnership with Simon and being a really close friend, too. Like, life's just very difficult and, like, different and... For anyone who is like querying what's going to happen in the future, just know that like it's going to be all right and to keep going. But Lucy, you one of the well, you are one of the artists that sort of changed the show because you know I'm sure you'll agree that the show evolved so much. My time of what 10, 11 years, the show evolved so much of 
well, you know, I remember when, when I first started, you get people coming in singing and then saying to Simon, tell me what you want me to be, which I know you always hate it. Yeah. yeah. And then you were the sort of the first artist that sort of came on you and the likes of James me. Arthur, just go, this is me. Yeah. I've written pretty much half my album. Yeah. And that sort of gives you as, a, as an A&R and a music publisher something to, something to work with, right? And to be honest with you, you know, people keep asking me about the show, are you going to bring it back, blah, blah, blah. I actually think... Uh, we do It'll, miss it, though. Well, but, and also, Alison, 100,000 new songs are uploaded every day at the moment. 100,000. So, and you know... It's also a seriously hard market to get into, and if you're working class, if you're northern, if you are not connected, it's not about even getting your money, your, like, your music out there. It's yeah. about the money to pay to even record it. Well, Some th people don't have that. And th well, this is it, right? So, in many ways, it's you know, democratisation of music because so much goes out, but then there's so much out there how does that music get heard? I mean, in it, many ways, it's quite a hard time to get into this. It's TikTok impossible. And everything, it's, it's really tough. It's good, but it's also difficult yeah. because I believe that you've got to get to know somebody, you know, and, and you know, that means, you're, you know, you've got to know their personality, what lane they're doing. You know, it's not just about one minute. Yeah. You know, it takes a while. Well, Alison saw me first in Derby before X Factor yeah. playing a gig there. So you like... were being an A&R person. Well, I, sta I, stayed, <laughs> I actually stayed in touch with her. I was like, this woman is Straight, amazing. And next thing I know, she's on X Factor. I was like, oh, I've seen this. <laughs> I, I should be a publisher. But honestly, I, I really miss X Factor. And I just feel there's so many people who still want to get their music out. Obviously, if you want to change the presenter, there's other <laughs> presenters out there. I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Derm Derm's the I'm, best. Dermot is the only person who can do that show. And, actually, I sure. and Dermot really cared about the artists yeah, as well. I did. mean, genuinely did. Loved. You know, it wasn't just yeah. like... I know, know you did. I remember hysterically crying underneath <laughs> your arm, just... Oh, and, if we did yeah. bring it back, though, Luce, do you think you got some advice for Simon how he could change it up a bit? I genuinely do. I think the importance of looking after contestants and trying to help their careers from a, like, a longevity perspective is really important. And I do feel like I'd be really the right person to ask if you've got any questions. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> the show didn't come back there. We'd have to know, we, have, like... we have talked about that, which is, yeah. you know, what would you do differently today? And there's a lot I've learned, to be honest with you. And one of the things is, is that I think it's started to become a bit of a machine. Yeah. You know, you put a record out that year and then you move on. Yeah. yeah. That's not the way to do it. And so, and also, you know, going, you know, when you throw someone into the limelight, it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know? So, uh, look, to be continued. Yeah. Move Ooh, forward positively. Eh? All I'd say is this as well, Simon, you know, with my learned friend here, talking BGT, if you needed an extra judge, let me tell you, there is no one I couldn't endorse her more. This one would yes, literally Simon. bring the house down in the palladium. What do you think, Si? Oh, we, we've, we've <laughs> Should had... I take it to deadlock? <laughs> take we've... it to deadlock! Show, different show, different show. Right, we've sorry. had this conversation before, <laughs> actually. I, know, I do love Alison, you know that. Yeah, but yeah. you just won't give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I'm only That's joking, not true. I'm only joking. I'm that is joking. true. I'm only joking. I do think it's funny, though. If the show did come back, it would sort of, like, the X Factor would sort of reflect kind of where music is now, with, with the likes of streamers and Spotify, and, you know, you know, yeah. the, you know the, the, the proliferation of music. However, the principle's the same. Yeah. You've got to get to know someone, and I, there's nothing like... Well, I think, you know, it's great that you're on social media, but then I think the idea of this being a second platform, um, yeah, I think it's still really, really important. I'll tell you what's incredible, and, and Simon always said it's never necessarily about the person with the best voice. It's all about star quality, and, 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 and actually, the amount of... You look at me. The, no, in <laughs> terms, like, away from you singing, though, no, the sure amount of careers it's launched, so you look <laughs> okay. at the likes of... You know, Ryland, who's yeah. unbelievable. And you just knew he Ryland was going to be a star. Voice. Ryland is a great singer. Holly yeah. Murphy. You know, I stood in a lift with Ryland at boot camp and he went, I'm, go I'm not going to do his accent, actually, but he was like, I'm going to be a presenter on Strictly. I'm going to have my own radio show on Radio 2. The guy knew... And he did yeah. it. He's yeah. Yeah. Away, incredible. He? Yeah. And it is that. It's drive, it's focus, it's keeping at yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, you never know when it's going to turn, so... It's unbelievable. And, and Sorry, and, and Lucy's point is right, is that... The record business is very London, right? It's all about being cool, sure. having contacts, etc. It's a lot snobbery yeah. in the music yeah. business, full stop. And it's tough. It, it, it's still tough today. Um, but, That's like I said, to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> but what an honour to have Simon back in you. That must be it, a lovely feeling. It really is. And like I say, of like six releases, and my last album chart number five last year. So I, I did all that sort of stuff 
on my own. Yeah. And then when I met Simon, he said to me, how did you do this? Yeah. And I said, I just clung on for dear life. I just didn't <laughs> let go. <laughs> they were shaking it and I just didn't let go. And, and really, it's that's funny great. where that takes you. Brilliant. And I think that's what you've got to do. You, what you did is, I, I think it's so important, is that you have to build a fan base, you know, and your fan base is super... I mean, they, it's... The loyal as well. Very, that's wild. the word I was looking for. Yeah. Really loyal. Really loyal. Yeah. They're great. 